In this lesson, we're going to look at arrays and how we can use arrays within our JavaScript. This video is brought to you by EpiPies Academy. Now, arrays give us the ability to hold multiple values within one variable. So as we looked at earlier, we had multiple variable names here and they only held that one value. So let's do something a little bit different where we've got a VAR. So we're going to declare an array here. And an array essentially is a container with those multiple values. So we'll just call it my array. And then in order to declare it, so we can declare it with the square brackets and then just close bracket. And then now we can add to that array. We also have the option to declare values within the array. And these are going to be treated the same way as we had the booleans, we had this, uh, the numeric values there and the strings. So if we had string value of JavaScript we want to contain in there and we want to have a numeric value there, we could have another numeric value, we could have a boolean value, uh, and we could also go back and have another string value. So a uh, number of options here and we can contain multiple values within this format within an array. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, pull out information from the array. So if we wanted to find out what the value of that first item in the array is and we want to output it within the console. So just do the console log again and we do my array. So the problem here is going to be that uh, we don't actually have an ability to uh, we're not actually pulling out that one value, we're pulling out the whole array value. And if we try to output it within our HTML, there's going to be too many values there and it's not going to output as that one string value. So we need to transform this and we need a way to actually access the array information and output it as single items. And this is really easy to do. So notice with the array we've got these index values here. So we're starting out at zero and if we've got one, two, three, four, and this gives us a hint on how we can actually output these values. So when we use those square brackets, we can output it as bracketed and we select item number one. Notice that the array starts at zero, the index starts at zero. So we're referencing it to index value and that value is going to be 50. So now when we refresh it, we get a value of 50 returned. Uh, if we want to see the first value, then that's just zero. We can see that it gets output within that type of format. And this gives us a lot of flexibility with outputting content within the array and uh, gives us the ability to select any one of these multiple values that are contained within the array. We also have the option, if we want to, we can update values within the array. So if we want to update array item zero, or if we want to update array item number one, and we wanted to assign a new value to it, we could assign a new value to it. So I'm gonna assign 1000 to it, and then I'm gonna output that array that's contained. Uh, at this point, after we've updated the value, let's refresh it, take a look, and we see that the array item with index number one gets referenced and updated to equal 1000. And with the arrays, there's quite a lot you can actually do with the arrays. So it's not like just the regular variables where you can just output that content. You can actually do quite a lot more with the arrays. There's a number of different methods that are contained within arrays. And these are built-in functions that are contained within JavaScript. And once you mention them, JavaScript essentially knows what to do with it. So we can do something where uh, one of the more common methods used is sorting. Uh, and we can also pull back the length of the array. So we see that within the array, we've got all these indexed items, but we also have the object called length. So let's go take a closer look at that and let's output the value for length. And going by what we've got here, the length should be five. So we should see within the console output five. We also have the ability to sort an array. So we need to reference the array and we treat it as if it was uh, an object and where we would apply the method to it. So we have the ability to sort it. And what sort does is it sorts the elements of an array in place and then just simply returns the array. 
And notice that we've got those rounded brackets and these are typical for functions which we are going to be looking at in the upcoming lessons. So now if I go and if I output and if I sort the array, uh, watch what happens now. If I sort it, we get a sorting value of the arrays. So notice that value 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, they've all changed and they've taken uh, an order that the numeric comes first, the smallest number first, going up to the largest number, and then after all the numeric values are finished, then it looks at the string values and it looks at those alphabetically. So starting with A, going all the way to Z, so starting out with C and then J, because those are the two that are contained within there, and then lastly it, it lists out the Boolean values. So this is something that we can do with arrays, and it gives us a whole lot more power when we're working with arrays. And we are going to look at how we can update and work with the rays in the upcoming lesson as well. Uh, and in the next lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can work with objects. So objects are another way that we can contain multiple values within a variable name. Uh, so we're going to take a closer look at this in the upcoming lesson.